So I want to explain slowly the relationship between the psychomotor retardation symptoms of depression and its relationship to the neurotransmitter norepinephrine in the brain. But first of all, what is psychomotor retardation? So some of the symptoms um, of depression can cluster themselves into different categories. One of these categories is psychomotor retardation. You also have cognitive ones such as problems in memory um, and other cognitive um, uh, things like thinking, helplessness. Uh, but we're going to focus in this one on psychomotor retardation. So psychomotor retardation means that a person who suffers from depression might exhibit symptoms that look like this. They speak slowly. They move slowly. Everything that seems um, very easy to do for many people who are not suffering from depression, like picking up the basket of laundry, making a doctor's appointment, going to pick up the kids from school, seems so daunting and it seems like it would take a lot of effort and concentration to accomplish and thus it's very difficult for them to get out of bed and do all of these things. It's important to know that not everyone who's diagnosed with depression or who suffers from de depression exhibits these symptoms. Now, psychomotor retardation has been shown to be related to the neurotransmitter norepinephrine. Thus, newer, uh, newer antidepressants also target neur the norepinephric system as well. Norepinephrine is made and released by neurons by this very small collection of nuclei in an area called the locus, uh, locus cerealis. Um, and Rocus cerealis is an area that's located in the pond um, near the base of the brain. And as you can see in the picture, it's made by these neurons and then their axons release this norepinephrine and basically spray it all over the brain such as the cortex. Um, norepinephrine is released, as you already know, by the sympathetic nervous system and involved in the fight and or flight response, but it's also released, as you know very well by now, um, by the adrenal gland, and it's released in abundance, not as a neurotransmitter, but in the bloodstream in abundance. What does norepinephrine do? Norepinephrine is kind of the neurotransmitter that's involved in making you alert um, in the startle response. So let's say, for example, you go watch a horror movie. Halloween is coming up. You go watch a, a scary movie and you step out to go to the bathroom or go get popcorn. And then your friend comes to find you and just taps you on the shoulder and you freak out. That's because your norepinephrine levels have been elevated by the scary movie. Thus, you are reacting much faster because really, like, we, your brain doesn't understand why you would subject yourself to um, sitting and watching a scary movie for two hours. Why would anybody do that to themselves? The brain doesn't understand that. So it reacts to this um, state of um, being very alert as though you're actually in a scary, something that's going to threaten your survival by preparing you to react faster like kick that person in the face because it's, you know, it's, you know, it's assuming that maybe that's a bear, that's a, somebody that's about to kill you, not that you're just watching a horror movie. So that's why you react very fast to your friend and you react, you react with being startled and maybe punching them. I don't know what you would do. So this is uh, this norepinephrine. Uh, the theory goes that in people who suffer from depression, or we think that people who suffer from depression have too little of norepinephrine. Therefore, the antidepressants recent ones try to um, target not just the increase in serotonin, but also an increase in norepinephrine. And in the hopes of, well, you have psychomotor retardation, slow reaction time, um, very little startle response. So perhaps if we increase norepinephrine, we can address or um, help uh, symptoms, uh, the psychomotor retardation symptoms.